Nemoidians Jar Jar Binks and Yoda for episode one were sculpted by this chap, Gary Pollard. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Now, you were the lead sculpting artist on episode one, weren't you? I was the key sculptor in the creature department, yes. So what does that mean? Uh, that means, uh, in a nutshell, I get the pick of all the best jobs. So things with a lot of political responsibility, if you like, you know, creating Jar Jar either as a, a CG or a physical suit, um, revisiting the new Yoda, which is a big responsibility, as you can imagine, mm -hmm. and creating another key race of villains, the Nemoidians as well. Get a lot of uh, very uh, the most interesting high-profile work, but then again, there's an awful lot of um, uh, things riding on it. Lots of opinions, lots of clients, lots of producers and creators, you know, all have an opinion. So it can be quite a roller coaster ride of ups and downs to try and get to that thing. So I have to be mature enough to take criticism as well, you know, and then uh, find the right thing that pleases all the parties. So it, it's not always plain sailing. As a lead, did you have to do all the talks with George Lucas and other heads of department? I did have some creative meetings, yes. Um, one of them, of course, was with Yoda and Frank Oz and the producers and George came along as well. And um, they saw my concept sculpt of the Yoda that you saw in bronze, which is also the one that was presented to Stuart. Oh, that is fantastic. That's incredible. That is fantastic. Um, and they liked him. There was a good comment from Frank Oz. He said, give him less neck because he was looking a little youthful so he made me hunch the shoulders like right up and right coming right down like this and make him appear a lot older which is a great comment but otherwise they completely bought it and they liked it what are the <coughs> challenges of bringing that back to life after so many years uh well the main key decision was do we update him or do we do uh, an absolute replica of the one that was now, we'd felt we were moving from foam latex technology into a lot more silicon work, which is translucent, and also the style of sculpting, no disrespect to the original sculpt, but it was actually quite crude by today's standards. And also, I like to introduce uh, more anat anatomy and realism uh, in the sculptures as well. So we made the decision to update him, which I, in retrospect, I think it shouldn't have been that way. What were you saying there about lost in translation from the sculpting process? Ah, uh, yeah, sometimes that happens. Um, sometimes I get to see a sculpt all the way through into the shooting and throughout the build and make sure that it goes together with sort of the right dynamic that I intended for it. Everything I intended for the character, I think, comes through in the concept sculpt. You can see like a twinkle in his eye, the right kind of age, a bit, as I say, a bit more anatomically feasible, a bit more like a real creature. Um, but when he was constructed, the silicon was a bit out of shape, um, his eyes didn't look good or natural. Uh, and I think he didn't look, if you put the two things side by side, uh, it doesn't translate. You know, he looks quite different from what I intended. And th you can see that. So that's like one that got away in the build. He's such a crucial character. In a way, I'm surprised that George Lucas led it through too. Uh, yeah, well, they all liked it and they all shot on it, you know, I, I would say that they liked it and shot on it. But mind you, George didn't really mind too much about what he shot because he knew he would alter it, you know, drastically or throw it out. So he shot wherever he liked. And But for a while there, uh, he was in the movie. Yoda is such a crucial character. Who did you have to impress the most? Uh, it was between George Lucas and Frank Oz. They both had to like it. And of course, George wanted Frank to be happy with what uh, was now happening to Yoda. So it was between those two, and uh, they did both uh, sign off on it with a few little changes. What was the presentation process? Did you have to go anywhere special and display what you'd made? With uh, Nemodians, I had to go to George's office, because that was quite a portable item. But um, I had a, a sculpting room that um, George and Frank came to when they came to see the, um, the Yoda concept sculpt, uh, with the camera entourage from the producers as well, because... Everything and everywhere that George went was filmed and kept on record and everything that he said was on record. What were your feelings when they went in and digitised the version of Yoda for The Phantom Menace? Uh, he was um, more faithful to the original Yoda and it's quite possibly that's the way it should exist. But then again, you know, the digital one was no more real. So you're sacrificing practical effects with digital. So in either way, you... and. You, you don't achieve a real realistic creature. You recognise him, 
But he, in his design, he's very cartoony as well. So he doesn't convince you that he's a real creature at any point. He's just a well-written character. So Yoda's, you know, not real either way as a convincing monster. Going forward with Yoda, what do you recommend they do for the future? CGI or back to sculpt? Uh, again, the best combinations are the right things to do. You shoot practically and then digital, digitally they have to match that. I mean, they don't like to do that. They don't like stuff in camera that they have to match to. They'd rather create it all themselves from the ground up. But sometimes, you know, they forget to add gravity and physics, don't they, when they digitally do something all the way. So back to a practical puppet that's faithful to the original and then digitally copy that. Gary Pollard, you sculpted Yoda for The Phantom Menace. Does that mean you also sculpted Yaddle? We did do Yaddle, yes. So uh, that was a younger Yoda creature. Uh, they decided in the end that he was quite effeminate looking because the way that the hair was done. Um, so he ended up being a girl, I think. That That's is. right. What's their direction with... Uh, there's a massive mop of hair on that thing. It is indeed, yeah. I mean, there was a sketch of him that just had a few strokes of hair coming off like a bit of a Mohican. But they just kept, uh, you know, plugging hair into it until it was like quite the main. But... Um, yeah, I mean, he worked as well as the others. He'd still, you know, he had a nice youthful face and clear eyes, but uh, if he's going to change sex, then it was ru- largely irrelevant, so. Gary, is Yedl and Yoda the parents of Grogu? <laughs> I have no idea about that lineage, so uh, I'm perhaps the wrong person to ask. Help you again? Yes! Mm. Yes! <laughs>